Galactic Civilization, or GALCIV for short, is an X-rated game of... Excuse me, did you say X-rated? Why, yes, I did. An X-rated game of... So there's a lot of naked flesh, right? No. GALCIV uses the four X's of exploration, exploitation, expansion, and extermination. You, as the human, may face up to five computer opponents, directing your civilization from a single small colony to a galaxy-spanning empire for the promotion of goods produced by Stardock Systems. And evil? Can I be evil? Yes, and evil too. You can be any of 32 grades, ranging from the deepest depravity through pure neutrality to the ultimate good. Goody two-shoes, yuck. And there are advantages to being very good or evil. Every star system has a certain number of planets, several of which may be available to support colonies. These 256 color graphics suck. Thank you for reminding me. The graphics here don't do justice to the game. When played at high color depth, say 65,000 colors, the screens are attractive while remaining functional. What are all those icons at the top? Those represent what your people are working on. You can set them to build morale, construct ships, work on social programs, or do pure research. So what's this? This screen controls what the planet is producing. You can produce one social program and one ship at the same time, or you may choose to produce nothing. What fun is that? Not producing saves money and can raise morale. Morale becomes very important when you become a republic or federation. You can even accept bids to immediately purchase ships or a social program. You mean we can play the United Federations of Planets? Trademark? No, we don't have the rights. If they become too unhappy, planets will revolt. Not only that, there are elections every 20 years. Your people also vote to go to war or reform their government once you have some type of democracy. Sounds like a drag. The democratic governments are much more productive than the totalitarian regime. Important events are announced in newscasts like this. Play is turn-based, and the computer players plot their strategies while you're moving your units. Then, when you hit the turn button, they execute them, and you're informed of the results and taken to planets that have completed a ship or social program that turn. They also show which systems and ships have been destroyed by war. You can go to a system that was taken, but you have to manually hunt for ships that were lost. Ships are rated for attack, shields, and strength, which represents how much damage they can take. Don't forget movement and maintenance. This looks like a blow-up of that tiny screen in the upper right corner. That's right. It shows information ranging from who controls a quadrant, which is important for the tourist trade, to which planets would make juicy targets for invasion and where ships are moving. Not only that, but there are a host of information screens showing how your planets rank in production and population, how you compare to the other civilizations in money spent on research, your economies, military might, and score. I haven't been a very good boy, have I? <laughs> no, you haven't. You've been taking the extermination option on the planetary event screen again, haven't you? I never did like Flipper anyway. Besides, if I want to be good, I have to give up 20% or more of my production on those planets. Ah, diplomacy where I can be truly evil. Fire! Fire! Well, yes, you can spy to collect information. And steal tech, my favorite. Keep an eye on your trade relations, which is vital, both to make money and keep the neighbors pacified. Fire! Fire! And for people like you, Stardock put in an option to let you try and destabilize other governments. <laughs> cool. With certain consequences if you're caught. The agency will disavow all knowledge. Oops. Guess I let the pollution build up too much, huh? That or the population is too large. Build some transports or colony ships. I heard the AI doesn't cheat. Is that true? Certainly, I couldn't find any sign that it was cheating, and neither has anyone else on the networks or internet. One of GALCIV's major selling points. The AI plays by the same rules you do. Can you beat it? Yes, even on the higher difficulties, but the AI will give you a good workout on your rocky road to victory. If you make it. I know, Moo. And this game is no move. No, it isn't. GALCIV is more complex in many respects, though ship-to-ship -ship combat is more like Empire Deluxe. GALCIV is an immersive, time-eating game. Nearly everything can be tweaked, and new expansions such as the Shipyard Supplement and changes to the code are coming all the time. For a first effort, or even second, third, or fourth, GALCIV is a first-class product for anyone looking for their next galactic conquest.